How is this fight not on the main card? I don't understand it. Doesn't make sense. Now I got to plan my day around the third prelim. It's kind of crazy. But anyways, you know, I've talked about this fight already. I've raved about Kyle Dawkins probably more than any other fighter in the UFC right now. If you want to see me really bob on the knob, go check out the uh, UFC prospect watch for the month of April. And also, you know, this fight has been rescheduled. So I've, I've talked about Kyle Dawkins quite a bit. You know, there's things about his length that I love. He's got crazy heart. The Brendan Allen fight is probably in my top three fights of the year for 20. 2020 the kid just i cannot believe what he's able and willing to take on in the ufc already at that 10 and 1 record i break down even some of his you know opponents records which is absolutely insane it's like three losses versus like over 40 50 wins it's just he's he's going up against the best prospects as one of the best prospects and i mean if there's anything that's going to build your game up it's probably that but you know we got that philly jersey matchup here and i'm really excited about it i think that Phil Hawes, there's something about him that, you know, that Imava fight, for example, is one that I also look forward to for so long. Then we saw that happen. And how amazing was that fight? You know, he won the majority. Of the I think that he did get out, out done on the striking department because Imava is a great little kickboxer there. But, you know, he was able to work in the clinch game, work in the ground and pound, stuff like that, which is where I think that he has an opportunity here. I think that Kyle Dox is really great at using his length. And man, you cannot touch Philly fighters when it comes to boxing. Chris Dawkins, his brother, is just lighting up people good length for the division. I think that he's just, you know, that broad shoulder kind of kid, man. And I think that his wrestling looked pretty good. And you know, the one thing that I absolutely love about Kyle Dawkins is that very underrated 94% takedown defense. I think that in the fights that he's been in, the guys he's taken on, when you're talking about opponent records and being so good, then for him to have that type of outlook and say, you know, the three fights that he's had in the UFC so far, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, the two and one record is phenomenal to me. Brendan Allen is coming off a huge career, you know, boost in his win and has been trading out of Sanford MMA. So, like, again, you are taking on what's probably going to be your top 10, top 15 fighters in the next two, three years. Like, and I'm not saying for a little bit of time. Like, I think Kyle Dox is going to be a ranked fighter for the rest of his career because that's just how good I think he is. And with the sense of improvement, all that kind of stuff, I just think that there's a lot of opportunity for him to move up. Now, Phil Hawes is in the same position now. The thing that I'm not, so the two things about both these guys that I really want to talk about is when you think about opponents and you think about the work and stuff like that, you know, Phil Hawes' record is is one of those ones where you go and look at it and it's just like hard working mofo. Like the guy had to go on the contender series a few times to be able to get that opportunity, lands the shot hurt around the world, gets in the UFC and I'm going to use the word lucky, which I hate doing in MMA. And I've said that a million times, but you know, in his UFC debut, he was supposed to, you know, obviously take on somebody else, but he gets to Jacob Malkoon on short notice. And now Jacob Malkoon is at the time, just the Robert Whitaker training partner who is now weighing in for safety purposes. Now he goes and weighs in, makes weight, then goes and gets knocked out in 18 seconds. I mean, if I'm taking the, I'm taking a UFC paycheck for, you know, 18 second knockout, I'm down. Probably the most money I'll make in 18 seconds of my life. But I will say that in the grand scheme of things, that is a, a much more like blue collar style, you know, uh, fighting record. Just he really had to grind out that. It reminds me a little bit of that Colby Covington uh, uh, scenario, right? The real story where, you know, he was told he's just not a sellable fighter. He can win fights, but we can't promote you. Well, I'm going to turn into the biggest heel the UFC has ever seen since Josh Koscheck and go that route. And now the guy's one, you know, he's definitely one of the most billable fighters in the UFC. So flip the script and go to Kyle Dawkins. It's just like at 10 and one, you know, three of those fights are already in the UFC. So he's at seven and zero before that. And the big thing for me is that Brendan Allen is looking like a top 10 fighter again in the UFC. So even that loss on short note, it's just like, wow. You know, I'm just so excited to see what Kyle Dawkins can do. And it's weird when you base your life around fights like this, you just want to pick the guys that you really could, you know, get behind and enjoy. And I think the Stolfus fight just officially sold me on him. And uh, I really think that he, 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 this is kind of his big break, right? To go three and one against the fighters that he was, he was, I mean, here's the thing. He was supposed to fight Kizriev too, which is another beast on the up and coming scene. So again, 13 and no Russian fighter. 
Instead, he's taking on Phil Haas now. Like, the guy's probably not going to get a break in his youth security. He seems absolutely okay with that. Like I said, 94% takedown defense. That's going to play very well into his hands if that Philly boxing and that cardio and heart sticks around. Now we go look at the lines. Let's see if I feel somewhat similar about him. And there it is, right? Phil Haas is getting the respect he deserves. He's still a dog, but this is this is identical, right, to the Yuri Proxa and the Dominic Reyes fight. But when you go look at the Proxa fight, that was a domination, right? Because we just talked about how Reyes, there's a lot of things he could have done a bit better there, and it just sucks to see him go down like that. But at the same time, what an amazing fight. What a beautiful attempt to stay in it by Dominic Reyes because he's so much hard and such a gamer. But... Now we're going into a similar fighter like Kyle Dawkins, who's actually coming in as the favorite now at minus 130 with Full Haas being the plus 110, plus 100 dog. Now, I have to side with these lines right now because I do think that I I can't go back now. <laughs> I haven't talked about a fighter more than Kyle Dawkins over the last month. And, you know, this is one where I just can't see him losing only because of the fact that he's been putting in the work with the fights that he has. And frankly, where he's really good, I think it's going to pose problems for, for Phil, Phil Phil Haas. But again, surprise shot, you know, coming in big with those power strikes, even working in some of that wrestling, surprising him against the fence, work that clinch work that's been so good to you against, you know, some of the fighters that you've, you know, got against on your come up and hope for the best because I think that this is a fight where either guy can actually win and that's why the lines are so close.